ericmwadithmother.com. Now, yesterday I was talking about negative divergence and how it generally tends to show up when either a stock or a market makes a make major high. Now, if you take a look at the Indian market, I have a question posed to me whether this is what looks like negative divergence. In other words, if you take a look at the Nifty, we see an improvement here from 2015 to the highs of 2017, but there's a definite lower high by the RSI. So the question becomes, is this negative divergence? Okay, now, yes and no. Yes, because it is lower, or obviously, it is lower than the previous high in terms of the RSI. This is lower. But I also say no, it is not negative divergence. Why? Because you have to be very careful with negative divergence. Remember, we have already the premise that when an instrument is above 69.1, it is very strong, very powerful. It has momentum. So remember that. Because we have what looks like the potential for negative divergence, yes, yet we have the RSI holding above 69.1, so you have a fight. You have two opposing forces, potential for negative divergence and the fact that you are above 69.1. One potentially should be moving it higher and the negative divergence should be moving it lower. Now, one thing I should add here about the negative divergence, number one, it hasn't turned down. <laughs> In other words, negative divergence is still taking shape. If this continues higher, it might eventually move above the prior high. In other words, we would need a negative month to confirm that this RSI has topped out. So, what I'm trying to say in many words is, you have to be very careful. Negative divergence does not work as well when the RSI is above 69.1. We should try as best as we can not to use negative divergence when the RSI is above 69.1. Why? Because when an instrument is above 69.1, the power, the energy, the momentum, the psychology, the consciousness of an instrument is just that it wants to go higher. So negative divergence does not work as, as, it, as it should. Now, if you observe negative divergence below 69.1, then that is different. Negative divergence below 69.1 has more cachet, has more power, has more relevance. Now, in fact, it so happened that the Nifty gives us a good example of this. If you take a look at the Nifty going back to the early 90s, I'll share with you two periods here. Now, this is all data monthly. And what we see here is there's a period here in late 2007 during this major top where the RSI on the monthly was above 69.1 and sure enough we can see that there was an acceleration of movement to the upside during that period where the RSI was above 69.1. There's also another period here towards late, actually towards late 2014, early 2015 here where the RSI was again above 69.1 which coincides with this top here. Now, observe that generally speaking, markets don't make a high without negative divergence. Remember from the previous video I was talking about, generally speaking, you're going to observe negative divergence in one of the major time frames, either negative divergence on the monthly or on the weekly or on the daily. In this particular example, the market made a high on a monthly basis without negative divergence on the monthly. As you can see, there is no negative divergence here, yet the market topped out. There is no negative divergence here, yet the market topped out. 
but we also know that there should be negative divergence either on the weekly or on the daily during these tops because trust me even if you do your own research you realize there's always some type of negative divergence during major tops that's generally what happens not all, always the case so let's go to the high here in late 2007 on a weekly chart and so what we have here now is a two-year weekly chart for the nifty and what we are looking at here is the top of 2007 late 2007 early 2008 and now you can see an improvement week to week take a look at the technicals it is only when the RSI fails to move above 69.1 while the market is making an improvement in prices that negative divergence is what we can see here caused the market to come off the highs and go into the bear market of 2008-2009 again we see negative divergence on the weekly even though there was no negative divergence on the monthly we see negative divergence on the weekly which gave us the top of let's call it late 2007 early 2008 now if we go back and take a look at the long-term monthly chart again we can go and drill in and see what happened here in 2015 late 2014 so let's go to that time period on a weekly chart and here what we have is the weekly chart from 2014 to 2016 now what you see again at the top is an improvement week to week but take a look at the technicals there's negative divergence while the RSI is also being rejected here when it is trying to move above 69.1 in other words negative divergence works best when the RSI is below 69.1 and here we can see again another top and this top was evidenced with negative divergence on the weekly all right which brings us to the current market again remember we just started the video here saying we, we don't want to use negative divergence on the monthly chart why because the monthly is above 69.1 which means we give this primary consideration which means we have to assume month to month as long as the RSI is above 69.1 this market can continue higher at the same time if we take a look at the current weekly chart we see potential of course we have to wait for a down week this has to turn down this has to confirm around current levels in other words we need to see evidence of negative divergence by giving us a couple of down weeks or at least one down week we haven't seen that happen so logically this could end up being negative divergence but as of right now not yet hope that makes sense so it looks like it is starting to look like negative divergence but the market is too positive for the week we would need to see a negative down week here coinciding with a move lower coinciding with the RSI failing to move above 69.1 that type of negative divergence RSI rejection at 69.1 would set the stage for negative divergence right now it looks like it could be but not yet also if you take a look at the daily now the daily is looking a little bit different we see here over the last couple of days looks like double top rejection at the 69.1 threshold so it could be that the daily is leading the weekly maybe the weekly eventually is gonna form negative divergence we can also see here that there's an improvement on a day-to-day -day basis to new highs but there's now negative divergence because the RSI failed to hold above 69.1 just something to consider also if you drill down to the hourly in the current market we've been making this push 
to new highs on a hourly basis, but take a look at the technicals, they have already confirmed negative divergence. So it could be that we are already seeing the smaller time frames of the hourly and the daily giving us negative divergence. The weekly is still forming, so we don't know. I would insist that the weekly chart gives us negative divergence or confirmation of negative divergence before we can consider using the weekly negative divergence for a top. Just like we saw confirmation during the highs of early 2015, you need confirmation of negative divergence before you can act on it. The bigger the time frame, the best you can use it. Here it was a weekly time frame. That's good enough to use it for giving you indication of a market that is running out of momentum and also coming into late 2007 the top of 2007 also came after a confirmed weekly negative divergence so you do need the big time frame to confirm negative divergence before you can see true visual evidence of a market that is running out of energy again when the rsi on the monthly or even on the weekly is above 69.1 those do not give the best type of negative divergence why because any instrument trading above 69.1 is always going to have momentum to the upside eric mother mother.com as always good luck peace and blessings e a c s Mwah.